What's good everyone, Vice here back with another video and today guys I'm going to be talking about God of War Ragnarok and the recent debacle with David Jaffe. If you don't know, David Jaffe is actually the creator of the series. He doesn't work on it anymore but he played a pivotal role in making the series very popular and now he runs a YouTube channel. So I believe on this YouTube channel or maybe it was on Twitter, he ended up talking about God of War Ragnarok and how it looks like DLC. Now this made a lot of people upset and he's pretty much been on a like defense tour i believe he was on like a four to six hour show discussing or and debating people about his statement calling it dlc we're saying it looks like dlc pretty much and i wanted to discuss that so before i get into the nitty gritty of my thoughts and how i feel about it make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more content the channel has been growing at a really good rate the past couple weeks so yeah yeah, I appreciate the support and yeah, we're just going to keep going. To get into the topic of this video, God of War Ragnarok, does it look like DLC? So David Jaffe, I feel like he made a very inflammatory statement, at least it appears that way because there was a previous debacle with Spider-Man Miles Morales and people calling it DLC. Oh, this is just DLC. This is not a full game pretty much downplaying the title so that rubbed people the wrong way a lot of xbox fanboys were parroting that oh it's just dlc it's really short it's, it's not a full game then playstation fanboys you know were of course defending it you know how that goes now spider-man miles morales is a full game it is a spin-off title it's not a full price game at the end of the day it was a full game and added a lot of new things it added a new story i felt like it had enough to be called a new game but i wouldn't get upset at someone for saying oh this looks like it could be dlc because well i mean it does it's it's a spider-man spin-off and it isn't a mainline title so I could see where people are coming from, but at the same time, it doesn't change the fact. And when you call something DLC, when you call a game DLC, it makes it seem like there wasn't much effort put into it. Like, let's be honest, like DLC in most games doesn't take as much effort as a sequel. Like this is pretty much true across the board. There are a few examples of DLC like going above and beyond, like The Witcher, for example, but in most cases, DLC is just a smaller piece of a full game. And when you call a sequel DLC, it comes off like, well, these guys didn't really put in the work for it to be considered a sequel. Now, I don't think David Jaffe meant this. I personally, I think that what he said made sense and I understand it. And I actually, you know, pretty much agree. Like judging from the trailer, yeah, it does look like it could be DLC, you know, judging from the trailer, because you see, you know, slight visual improvements. You see a couple new mechanics like the dog sleds. You see the grappling where Kratos can, you know, grapple to different points on the map. So you see the verticality. But overall, it looks like the first game. And that isn't really a problem, but calling it DLC makes it seem like it's a bad thing. When you're getting a sequel for a game, you don't want it to be DLC. You want it to be more than. And Horizon Forbidden West is a perfect example of what we want from a sequel. It's a game that recently came out and everything it did added upon the previous iteration. So we expect that from a sequel. And going off of the God of War Ragnarok trailer, we didn't really get much. You know, we got a lot of story details. I feel like that's the main thing. I feel like that's why it's kind of hard to call it a DLC, I guess, from a story perspective, because they are pinting and revealing very pivotal things in the story, like the reveal of Tyr and uh, Anger Boda, who happens to be Loki's wife. The trailer happened to have a lot of details in it. Going strictly off the gameplay, there wasn't much there. And visually, it looks better, but God of War 2018 looks so good. I mean, it's, it's going to be hard to really top that. Going off of gameplay and visuals, I 100% agree with David Jaffe. But when it comes to the story and the big reveals that we got within that trailer, it seems like a sequel. Like this doesn't seem like a side story or anything like that. My guess is that he was strictly talking about gameplay and visuals here. And from that perspective, I do agree. I do agree with that. The God of War Ragnarok trailer, in my opinion, seemed to be like a kind of like a teaser trailer almost. Like, it was a full trailer, but we didn't really get to see a lot of new gameplay elements. It wasn't like the Horizon state of play. That That's why we need a state of play. Like, we, we want to see the new elements included in this game. They only sh showed, like, two new things, really. I think this game is going to have a lot more. I think very soon we're going to be able to 
in this argument of it looks like DLC. Like at the moment, I feel like it's a fair statement. But personally, looking at Sony's track record of sequels, The Last of Us Part Two and Horizon Forbidden West, Horizon Forbidden West, like I stated, improved in a myriad of ways and added so many new things. And The Last of Us Part Two did the same thing. So I expect nothing less from God of War Ragnarok, especially considering that Sony Santa Monica is right up there with Naughty Dog in the quality of their games and critical acclaim. I expect no less from their sequel. So let me know what you guys think about this situation in the comments section down below. Do you agree with David Jaffe? Do you agree with the people that disagree with him? Let me know in the comments. And yeah, I'm going to continue uploading daily or every other day at least. And yeah, so stay tuned for more content and I'll see you all in the future. Vice out. Peace.